So Michelle, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you doing? Good to be here. I'm doing great. Uh, first of all, tell us where you're coming from, where you're situated. Well, right now, I don't know how many of you have been up to Topamori. A lot of people have come up here for holidays. It's very popular. And we're about 15 minutes south. Little little area called Dyers Bay. Okay, awesome. So yeah, we're, we're right up on the peninsula. We're right between, you know, Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. We can head to the water 10 minutes either direction. We're there. Uh, very, so, very beautiful. Fairly isolated. Is that fair to yeah. say, especially in the winter? In the winter, yeah. In the winter, it's yeah. very isolated. But we so, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good for an artist, I would imagine, right? Like it lots... is. There's a lot of us up here, yeah. but not so many that uh, do what I do. Yeah, you you have a very specialized field. So is it is it fair to say that you pretty much only draw? First of all, let me get make sure I have my terminology correct. Is do you consider it what you do drawing? That's the closest that I can come to it. It's the form <laughs> of drawing because I don't really paint. So that's as close as you can get is say that I draw. Yeah. Okay. So to be specific, most of what you do, and by all means, correct me if I don't have the terminology correct. Um, I, so I do remember a little bit of this from art history class. Surat is the one that I remember. So pointillism, do you call yeah. it pointillism or do you yeah, call it that's something what it else? Is. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess I remember the Surat painting, the picnic. And I remember saying, I remember the art teacher, she was, you know, quite eccentric. And, and I remember yeah. her explaining that it's, it's pointillism, right? That everything yeah. you see is a tiny, is a, a tiny, tiny, little, a tiny yeah. little dot. Yeah. And I remember saying, oh my goodness, wouldn't that like drive somebody mad doing that? <laughs> and, and she said, Darling, all artists are a little mad. <laughs> <laughs> We're a special group. <laughs> so it's literally what we see in your art is literally millions of little tiny dots in whatever yeah. medium you're working it's in. All ink. I just, I work in ink. So it's all just one color, black. Um, so really what you do is, the closer the dots are together, the darker it looks. Right. And if you spread them out more, it looks lighter. So you just kind of work through, you know, what they just a, a value scale and it all comes together when you step back. Yeah. If wow. Really close, it's all dots. If you step back, there's the picture. Yeah. So are you going from photographs? Yes. Okay. Every, every drawing starts with a photograph. Usually it's one of my own, especially mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. Um, unless, of course, somebody is commissioning me to do a drawing of their own horse, right. then obviously I'll be working with their photos or potentially a track photographer if we've gotten permission or something like that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You're a very good photographer uh, Thank you. In, in, addition, in addition to being uh, a great artist. It makes sense. You have the eye. So it makes it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. So how long have you been how long have you been uh, doing art for? And the pencil? Or I, guess well, I, <laughs> I, I, I assume you probably were always uh, artsy yeah. as a kid. Very much so. My my parents paid for me to join an adult art group when I was 10. Oh. And had a lot of uh, personal instruction that way outside of school. Yeah. And obviously I took I took art right through high school, right to the end of it. So, right. So did you ever imagine a time when you would be making a living from doing art? I hoped. Yeah. It was always there in the back of my mind, but yeah. I mean, you hear starving artists, right? Yeah. <laughs> or you never, you never actually believe it's going to happen. <laughs> right, right. So when did you actually start making money from your art? I don't think I have yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough grind, right? Because it is, it is. Yeah. But I mean, especially now that I've, I've got the kids at home and... I'm not working outside of the home. It gives me a lot more time to, to dedicate to it. Right. Which has become obvious in the last few years for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So to be clear, you are, you are charging money for <laughs> some, for some of your art at least. And you, you yeah. are collecting, you are collecting <laughs> money. It's just the amount of time it takes to actually create. Well, just, it yeah. it takes so long. And if I were to charge enough to reflect that, 
I wouldn't sell anything. Yeah. So, it, so uh, give us, sorry, you go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so something, something like, uh, something like that Sebastian K portrait, for example, uh, 120 working hours. <sighs> <laughs> wow that's so crazy. you can imagine you know if i were to bill accordingly it yeah. wouldn't have left the studio <laughs> right exactly oh wow uh, that, yeah. that particular one i'm quite proud of it's hanging in sweden right now so it was purchased by the owners of sebastian k oh great oh that's awesome very cool yeah so your work is uh your work is in collections sort of all over the place right it's pretty spread out now it's yeah. pretty spread out i've got uh, some prints in australia lots down in the states and canada obviously so. yeah yeah so your work has appeared on uh, i know a lot of uh, certainly for our viewers who are in ontario they'll have seen your artwork all over the place it's all very, over the place yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very prevalent on uh program covers for racetrack yep. signature days um yep. uh Tr truro as well so out yeah, east. Truro has picked up a lot of it Eastern Canada. Yeah. And locally in your own, uh, in your own backyard. Uh, well, I don't know if it's in your backyard. Nothing is really in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> except probably wildlife. Um, but, uh, own sound, which I guess is closest to you. That's the closest city to okay. us. Okay. Yeah. So you've had, uh, you've had some of your artwork featured on, on banners and stuff. Yes have a, a banner competition every year and I've had I think last year was my fifth year oh wow and it's still buried, so it's not guaranteed but uh the last three years they've actually accepted racing art so that was nice to see yeah that's great so yeah. so this I assume kind of goes to your bigger mission of uh you seem to have a real passion for you know trying to to spread the word about harness racing yeah. and engage more people in the industry bring um, in fans who yeah. may not have known that it existed in our area. Yeah, exactly. So take us a little bit through the actual process of, of uh, so you get a concept, you have a, either yep. someone has commissioned you, so you have either, a working photo from them or yep. so, so just kind of take us through it. Well, everything starts with the photo, like I said. So, you know, I look at the photo and I try to figure out, you know, first of all, what size am I working with? Mm -hmm. And I'll play with that photo until I get the exact placement of it that I want cropping positioning. And, um, I guess, you know, they say the composition, right. Mm -hmm. Um, once I have that, then, then I go to work on the drawing and that can take me several days, depending on the size and complexity. If I'm drawing, you know, a full wind photo style drawing, I mean, that's a lot of harness. So, right. <laughs> so they take a long time to, to get to the point where I'm ready to put ink on paper. Okay. But, um, so everything starts with a line drawing. Okay. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have one. Okay, great. So this is one that I'm just, just going to get started on. Okay. Can you just. And it might be a little bright. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. It's all just, I put as much detail in as I can to start. Okay, great. At least oh, as God. far as placement of everything goes. But that one's an eight by 10. So. Okay. It won't take as long as some of them to, to finish once I do get going. Right. But another one that I have sitting behind me, I've been working on for three years, so you never know. Oh, wow. Can we see that one? Can we see that one? I started this one, I guess, three years ago now. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen, I've You've seen, seen me working on that often. I, on <laughs> yeah. In your social media feeds, I've seen that one. Where yeah. You have the words work. work in progress and blazing yeah. across. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in progress and in progress. <laughs> But it's coming along. I should finish it this year. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Well, to me, it looks like it's mostly done. Uh, his it's helmet. Cool. It's his... uh, helmet a little bit on the colors and just finish off the starting gate. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Oh, man. That was so, the photo taken at Grand River. So is it the harness that presents it in terms of the most uh, aggravating thing? No. To... No. Yeah. The helmets. Um, that they've gotten sense. so detailed in the last few years. Right, right. <laughs> and so, when I say aggravating, is that is that the right phrase, or is it uh, challenging and you love it? It's a, or it's a challenge. Okay, 
And quite often, I mean, there's, there's going to be little details that I just, I can't get in there. So I do the best I can. Right. Exactly. Well, the best the you hard, can. The you... isn't too bad. The hardest yeah. is all right, because, you know, I'm familiar with it. Right. Whereas the helmets are, they're all different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So uh, how much, I guess that's a good question too, is, um, you know, how do you think, so take one of your artist friends who maybe does this. It, what, first of all, do you have any artist friends that do this? Kind, do you call it pointillism or do you call it, stip, is it stippling? Is that the Well, correct? if you want to get technical, we would call it stipple. Okay. The difference is that stipple is a single color and pointillism okay. can be a blend of different colors. Okay. And, and you're so typically, you're, yeah, you're typically working in, in blacks, right? In, yeah. Just okay. black. Okay. 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 So stipple. So do you, do you know any other artists that uh, like, are you, uh, I know, of, I know of one down in the States and okay. she does mostly wildlife. Okay. All right. But there's, there's not very many. Okay. So do you think, so maybe this might be a dumb question, but that's okay. Um, so do you think that if you were to take that, you know, if that other artist, let's call her Marianne, I don't know why, but let's call her Marianne. <laughs> um, if she were to tackle this subject matter, um, is it fair to say you would have a significant leg up on her because you just you, from the familiarity of the industry? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Because well, that, I mean, an, av an average person not involved in harness racing will look at our harness and just say, wow. And, <laughs> you know, it's got so many pieces. Right. <laughs> if right. you look at some of the pacers in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Or I never trotters now. I mean, yeah. I would personally, I would, I would struggle with the trotting hobbles. I haven't worked with them. So if, if I ever had to really get down, you know, to the nitty gritty of them, yeah. I'd want to get my, my hands on a pair. Oh, is that it's, right? Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I actually have a lot of harness in the studio just for that reason. If I'm not familiar with a certain piece, I can pull it out. Okay. That's, that's an excellent <laughs> segue because I wanted to talk about your studio. So we can see a little bit of it behind you. Yeah, you can and, see a little. Yeah. And you have actually a, an excellent, uh, an excellent little video on your social media feeds um, with a <laughs> bit of a studio tour. So yeah. it, uh, is that so? I mean, I know that you have painstakingly put that studio together. There are lots of different oh, pieces. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm all, always adding to it. And so, is it to give you inspiration? It, uh, it's obviously has some, um, you know, relevance in terms of having things there, like you just said, so you can touch. Yeah. 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 So, what's the, what's the idea behind it overall? It's a little bit of both. It's, it's inspiration, it's nostalgia, and it's just, I'm a collector. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, most collectors wouldn't have a, a full harness sitting there just because. <laughs> but, you know, if, if, I, if I really need to see something, I just, you know, unzip the harness bag, pull it out, and then I can see. So tell us a little bit about, about your background, um, how you acquired this, this hands-on knowledge. You come from uh, a racing background, right? You were a caretaker, trainer, owner, breeder. I was breeder. a caretaker. I, I didn't actually start until I was 14. Okay. My family's not in the industry. They're not horse people at all. Okay. But uh, I was born with the bug. And <laughs> around the age of 14, you know, you're, as a kid, you're told, get your own job if you want something, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to Flambro. <laughs> put up an ad and had a job two days later. <laughs> oh, is that right? Really? So, so what made you go to Flambro? Like, had you had exposure to harness racing? Uh, not much at all. Um, a close friend of mine in grade school, her stepfather was head of maintenance there at the time. Mm. And I'd only been there once or twice. And that was just with him. And he would just take us around and show us a couple of barns and pet some horses. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, when I started working in the industry, I'd never seen a harness race. So I did not see any horse racing until it was one of my own horses on the track. <laughs> There's not very many people who can say that. No. <laughs> so I kind of just got, you know, thrown in. <laughs> yeah. Sink or and swim. That's sink the way. Yeah. It was great. It was great. So 
I, I worked as a groom. I've done um, some assistant training. I got my trainer's license when I was a teenager mm -hmm. and worked on a breeding farm. Okay. And then most recently I worked as a, a vet's assistant for okay. horses. Great. Okay. All right. So kind of worn many hats, I guess you could say, yeah. within the industry. And I mean, all of that experience just leads to more inspiration. Yeah, for sure. I uh, so is it fair to say you were uh, you know, uh drawing in one somewhere or the other horses during that time? Like you're always sort of drawing or I've always been drawing. I have I have some pencil drawings that I did when I was 14, 15 of the horses I was working with at Flamborough. I mean, for a little while you get away from it here and there, but yeah. it's always come back to harness racing. Yeah. Interesting. You can't get it out from under your skin once it's yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I imagine it's the same with art, right? Like if you have oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's the same thing. If you have the calling, you need to yeah. feed it in one way or the other. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so tell us a little bit about, uh, so I was asking you off camera about, uh, because I wasn't sure of his status, but uh, Conrad Sealster is a horse that uh, our Ontario viewers will be uh, familiar with. He was uh, yep. quite, quite the story at the end of the 1990s. And he was uh, like, a, he was, I think he was claimed like once in his career. Once career, yes. Yeah. For 3,500 bucks. And Something like <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, yeah, Jeff Houghton had him for for the rest of his life, pretty much. Yeah, and I think he raced right until he was fourteen, right? He did. He did. Yeah, yeah. he made four hundred. I looked him up before we came on. He made four hundred and forty five starts, which is yeah, it was incredible, just insane. Um, and uh, over three hundred thirty thousand dollars. So yeah, three hundred ten thousand dollars. Th over three hundred thousand dollars. Anyway. Over three hundred. Yeah, yeah. So you worked with him uh, during the time he was with the Houghtons. Yes. Yes. I was, I worked for Jeff for about three years. Okay. So I was, I was Conrad's groom at the time and we went all over Ontario with him. Yeah. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it, He's a gutsy little horse. <laughs> yeah, very gutsy. Yeah. It's very gutsy. Uh, just the uh, sort of the definition of iron horse, right? Like just oh, exactly. week in, week yeah. out. Um, so, so where is he now? He's in the backyard. <laughs> out there picking on the paint horse <laughs> he, he's he's king of the field wow and he's 30 you, years old now wow that's incredible and how is his health good very good very good nothing you know knock on wood that i can say bothers him at this age he still you know whinnies for his dinner and paces up to his bucket <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great that's uh so how long ago did you acquire him Oh, he was 18 when I got him. So I guess I've had him 12 years now. Oh, isn't that I, I got him through OSAS. Okay. Yep. Great. I was, I hadn't worked for Jeff for a few years at that point. And he had gone, well, obviously into the kids camp. And from there he went to OSAS and I happened to pick up one of those horse trader magazines the one day when we were out working farm calls, me and the vet and there was a full page ad, you know, saying that he was still, still looking for a home. And I was like, well then. I just picked up my phone and emailed them right there and just said he can come home. Yeah. Oh, that's great. What a wonderful story. I how many sketches and and works have you done of Conrad Sealster? Uh, Conrad? He, yeah. Oh, three or four at least. Yeah. 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 I actually just finished one. Conrad and my other standard that I had, Shepherd Home. So that oh. was the day that Conrad came home. Oh. And that was his lovely. first time that they were out and just saying hello over the fence. Oh, that's kinda, great. It was, kinda, it was cute. That's so lovely. We've listed some of the other projects that you've done. You also did a series of cards last year, beautiful cards yep. to commemorate uh, the Ontario Standard Bread Adoption Society's 25th anniversary. Yes. Um, and so are there, are there any other uh, of those projects uh, that we haven't mentioned that you really enjoyed doing? Or last year, I did a project with Hanover Raceway for the Women's Driving Championship. So we did uh, a small kind of graphic portrait of each of the girls that participated and, you know, put them all into a program. Oh, cool. So, Very cool. A lot of fun. Yeah. So Hanover is your, is your closest racetrack, right? Yeah. It's about an hour and a half drive, but it is, <laughs> it is the closest one. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> but yeah, I've been, I've been partnered with them now for, this will be our third year. Yeah. So I'm 
technically the official artist of Hanover Raceway and in particular the Dream of Glory trot. Yeah. So every year with the Dream of Glory, the the winner will get an 11 by 14 race portrait of their horse. Right. And actually last year we started with the balanced image trot as well. They get an eight by 10, just headshot portrait. Okay. That's, that's really cool. Like what a great, uh, amazing, unique award. Different. Yeah, totally. Nobody and else in, in Canada doing it. Exactly. Yeah. No, what a great idea. I also love, I, we should also mention you also in terms of, uh, materials or substrates or whatever, yep. whatever you call them. Um, you also do uh, stuff on wood, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some, some will be on, you know, a slab of wood, but I also do Christmas ornaments every year. Yeah. Those look they're really popular. Cool. Yeah. They're very yeah. popular because I say any pets allowed and yeah. usually it's dog. Everybody loves their dog. Yeah. Well, we get a lot of those every year. And I really like this concept that I've seen a lot of um, with the actual, so you do, I guess, it, I guess you technically call it a sketch of, yep. um, although when I think of a sketch, it's, it doesn't look anything <laughs> like your sketches, but anyways, um, uh, on the actual race program page. Yeah. What a cool <laughs> concept. I, it looks so neat. It looks really neat. Yeah. Did you come up with that? Yeah, I just... I don't know. I don't know why I thought of it, but I just thought it would look kind of cool. And yeah, I had the pro sitting there from the dream of glory last year and just started sketching over top of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's and really it, cool. It, it was very popular. I've had a few people that have done them now. So. Well, listen, thank you so much. Uh, it, that's answers all my, uh, all my questions. I'm endlessly fascinated by your process and um, just uh, your dedication to it. Um, and certainly uh, it's a benefit to, to the industry to have such uh, a talented artist committed to, to you know, uh, really capturing these moments in harness racing in a way that nobody else really can. So uh, I, I think we can all appreciate a little more the amount of time and effort and uh, the potential for disaster and all of those things. Um, uh, so yeah, so on behalf of the industry, thank you for, for putting in all that time and giving us these, these beautiful, uh, representations of the sport that we all love. So thank you for that. Thank you.